We are just getting ready to get started. A few more minutes till our start time. And we're just getting all the back end of the tech set up. Uh, right now, we are getting Facebook brought on with us. And so welcome those of you who are with us on Facebook. I'd love it if you'd give us a wave and say hello. We'll be getting into the bulk of the presentation on the hour. So in just four minutes. It's, I hope you're having a fabulous day. My day started out really well. I went for an amazing run this morning. It was such a beautiful morning, clear. Well, the skies aren't clear, but the air is clear, and it's cool and crisp, and it just felt so good. So for those of you who are joining us on Facebook, I'd love it if you would just say hello. Let me know who you are and where you're from. And if you're with me on the webinar already, again, I would love it if you would just let me know who you are and where you're from. We are going to be uh, trying to bring Instagram on with us in just a moment. And as soon as we've got them up, we will be getting going. Hello, Eugenia from Toronto. Good to see you. Thanks for being with us on Facebook. I'm really glad you're with us. It's always good to have, have uh, people live with us as we talk about iridology and as we learn about iridology as well. So I'm glad you are with us. We will be going live in just a couple of minutes. We know that um, Instagram tends to be a little fussy. If we don't actually get the presentation started uh, pretty quick, as, as soon as we've got it running, if we don't get into the meet, people drop off pretty quick. So we've learned that we need to um, be pretty timely with how we get into Instagram so that we hold attention there. Again, I love, love, love that you're joining me. Eugenia, I'd love to know a little bit more from you about what your background is in holistic health. Um, it's, it always helps me to tailor make the presentations to tweak them on the fly if I know the background of my attendees. So I look, I would love to hear from you and anybody else who is joining us on Instagram or sorry, on Facebook or on the live webinar, love, love, love to hear from you and to find out a little bit more about what you do. I really do believe in tweaking these presentations on the fly so that they meet the needs of the people who are joining us. There we go. We are just bringing Instagram on. And they are just populating for us. This is so cool. So, so cool. So we are so glad to have you joining us here for this live training on iridology. We are excited to talk about stress. I mean, has anybody that's with me had a stress-free 15 or 18 months past? Right? I don't think so. Um, most of us have had some stress. Ms. Nora, Nora, so good to see you. Thank you for being there. Hello, hello. We are going to be talking about iridology and how stress shows up in the eyes. HealthWise is with us as well. We are going to also um, just be sharing some great information with you. We will be getting started with the bulk of the presentation in under a minute. And I'm so glad you're with me. Hello, hello. We are going to be talking about stress and, and how it shows up in iridology or does it show up in iridology. We're going to really talk about some particular iris markers that we often see and talk about where they come from, how they got there, what they mean, and we're going to dive deep. Again, if you're just joining me on the webinar and on Instagram or on Facebook, I would love it if you would say hello and introduce yourself. Just let me know where you're from. I'd also love to know what your background is so that we can make sure we actually make this be what you need it to be. All righty, and we are going to we are going to get rocking and rolling. Hello, I'm so glad to be with you today. Uh, uh, this is going to be, I think, a really interesting and fun webinar, and I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you've made the time to be with me. Again, I would love it if you would take a moment to just say hello, regardless of what platform you're joining me on, just so I know who's here. 
And if you have a background in holistic health, which I'm hoping you do, if you would just share with me just one or two words about what you do. Oh, we've got Leah from Europe. Leah is one of my course grads. Hello, Leah. So good to see you. And um, it's always fun to see a course grad uh, pop in on these as well. I would just love to know your background a little bit so that we can make sure that we make this be what you need it to be, right? That is so important because we're going to be together for about 45 minutes. And I want this to be 45 minutes that is well invested, not wasted. Got it? So the more, if you want information that's going to meet your needs, you've got to give me some information back here. Just take a moment here to introduce myself. Um, my name is Judith Cobb. I am a master herbalist, natural nutrition clinical practitioner, certified iridologist, and certified iridology instructor. I've been in the wellness industry for four decades, and I've studied three different styles of iridology. I've studied nutrition in several places, herbology in several places. I've got more credentials more alphabet behind my name than I care to admit. So I just shorten it to the ones that are important that I feel are important, the ones that I value the most. And so as we, uh, I got into holistic healing many, many years ago, well, four decades, just started getting interested actually in high school. I was very interested in midwifery and very interested in natural childbirth. That was a beautiful segue then into all things natural. And it became obvious after a couple of years at university that um, when I came home for the summer one year, I had a health problem and I didn't know what it was and the doctors couldn't figure it out and I got very, very frustrated. They couldn't rule things out. They couldn't rule things in. And I was getting so annoyed with it that I finally decided just to walk away from orthodox medicine pretty much entirely. And it was about then that I met my husband, who, whose mother had just started getting into herbs and nutrition. He started sharing with me what he knew, and it so resonated with me. I just, it was like I'd found my home. I had been in university to teach elementary education. I wanted, had wanted to be a school teacher for years. But as I learned about natural healing, as I started learning about herbs and nutrition and reflexology and iridology, it just resonated. It was just who I was meant to be. Fortunately, it built into teaching shortly after I um, started getting credentials behind my name. I started teaching face-to-face uh, -face classes back then because we didn't have the internet four decades ago. And the courses went so well that we often ended up with wait lists. So over the years, I've written many books um, that have been self-published uh, self and self-distributed. So you won't find them on Amazon. Pregnancy Naturally, The Herbal Birth Kit Handbook, Healthy Kids Naturally, The Essential Guide to Nature Sunshine Products, Biokinesiology and Color Therapy Level 1 and 2. And most recently, about five years ago, The Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology Textbook, which is the textbook that we use in the iridology program I teach. I've also uh, created and taught many courses. I've created Herbology Level 1, and this is the very first course I designed some 35 years ago. It was 20 hours of herbal training for home use. So we were talking about how to use herbs that you could buy com that were commercially prepared. We weren't talking about growing or harvesting or preparing things. We were talking about buying it ready-made. And that course was so popular, we used to have a cap of 20 students, and we would run it a minimum of three times a year. And it was so popular, we often had a wait list, and the students loved it so much that they asked if I could create an advanced course, which I did. I created a level two for them, which was 16 hours of advanced herbal training for home use. The level one was primarily single herbs, and the level two was working with herbal combinations and how to ascertain based on the ingredients of a combination, what you could use it for. Because a company will market a product a certain way, but when you understand the ingredients, you understand that their marketing is very limited, right? So we taught that advanced training. And I had many people from those two courses who went on to become herbalists, coaching people for their health and wellness, which was pretty exciting. 
uh, biokinesiology and color therapy level one and level two, another course that I've designed and taught. For a few years, I was a certified prenatal educator, so I designed and taught prenatal classes. Loved that, had so much fun with that. And then, um, again, more recently, about five years ago for the actual big course, I'd been teaching iridology for, again, decades, but about five years ago when I decided to certify with IPA, I created the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System, which is the iridology course that I teach that contains all of the curriculum that a student needs to qualify to sit for the certification exam with IPA. So if you'll stay with me to the very end of our presentation today, again, we'll be done by about quarter to the hour. Um, we will be doing a bit of an introduction on that course, the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System, because we've got a course uh, starting next week, uh, a new cohort. Alrighty, so just throw this in real quick for those of you who are with me right now. Uh, 12 noon today, which is in just under an hour. So at the top of the hour, again, we'll be doing an introduction webinar for the Dynamic Iridology Assessment System program to give you all of the ins and outs, the ups and downs, like what do you get, what's involved, what's the benefit of taking this course, how will it help you, how, how will it help your clients, how do you get enrolled, all that kind of good stuff happening at 12 noon today. There is the URL if you would like to join us tinyurl.com slash 2021-september-2, SEP-2. Um, I like to keep these just really, really simple if I can. All right, are you ready to look at some eyes? If you're ready to look at some eyes, let me know. Type eyes in the comments. If you're ready to look at some eyes, I want to see eyes in the comments. Whether you're with me on Instagram, or on Facebook, or on the webinar, give me a little bit of love here so that I know that you're still awake. Alrighty, are we seeing that? Okay, if you're still typing, keep typing, hit send, and let's get moving with this, okay? Here we go. In constitutional iridology, these lines that are coming around here, and Leah, thank you for saying eyes. Love it. Thank you so much. All these platforms have their own delays, right? These lines coming around here are called contraction furrows. Now, some of you have some iridology background that is not constitutional, and some of you might be brand new to iridology. That's very cool. I would love to know what are some other things that you have seen these lines called? I want to see that in the chat box, in the comments. I want to know what else you've heard them called. Today, what we are going to do is we're going to debunk some myths about these markings. We are going to get, gain an understanding about where they come from. And we are going to gain an understanding about what they mean. And we're going to look at some case studies as well. Does that sound good? All right. So what have you seen these called? And Eugenia, thank you for saying eyes. You want to look at eyes too. That is fabulous. I love it. Have you heard these called maybe nerve rings or stress rings or cramp rings? Do any of those sound familiar? Those are all old school names. They are names that we left in the dust decades ago. Tamara called them uh, stress lines, Hi, or Tara rather, Tara, so good to see you. Stress lines, yeah, stress lines. Makes it sound like people got these because of stress. And if the stress go goes away, they'll go away. We'll talk about that in a moment. Let's look at, at some anatomy. So I, actually, I'm going to flip back one. So what we're going to look at is a cross section of the iris right here. So we're going to, instead of looking this head on, we're going to lay it on its side. And then we're going to cut it and look at a cross section. So this is the pupil right over here. This is the front of the iris, which in that eye we just looked at was blue. Right. This is the body of the iris. This is the back of the iris that is facing 
into your eyeball. Does that all make sense? Are you understanding the view we've got here? I'll tell you, I looked at a diagram like this for about 30 years before I understood what it was. No one ever with something like this placed, where's the pupil? Or, you know, which side is the front, which side is the back? And it was totally confused me. So I'm hoping that helps that we've described what we're looking at. So when we are looking at, at contraction furrows, which is what this is, it's an actual dip or a bend in the surface of the eye. Now, in truth, whatever the contour is on the top of the iris, on the surface, we will have the same contour on the back side of the iris. So this diagram is not absolutely perfect because we've got a contraction furrow here. There would be a dip here. What we need to understand is that contraction furrows, just like eye color, just like the way the fibers are laying in the eye, contraction furrows are inherent. They are inherent. You in, you, these are part of your genetic structure. It's not the bad news you got yesterday that put these into your eyes. This is a part of your genetic structure. When we see that someone has contraction furrows like this, it tells us that their genetics have made them predisposed to living in the sympathetic nervous system response. So what does that mean? Is sympathetic nervous system something you're familiar with? If it is, I want you just to type in SNS for sympathetic nervous system. Let me know if sympathetic nervous system is something you're familiar with. All right. We need to know that because we need to understand what the sympathetic nervous system is and what it does. And we'll do a quick refresher if we need to. All right, I'm not seeing anything yet, but again, there's about a 15 second delay and I always get too excited and I don't want to give it 15 seconds. Okay, so it sounds, it's looking to me at this stage, like with maybe the exception of Leah, who um, didn't make a comment, but I, but because she's a graduate, I know she knows what the sympathetic nervous system is. Uh, when we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system, this is the part of your nervous system that kicks in when you are under stress. This is the fight, flight, or freeze part of your nervous system. What we know is that when people are under stress, when their adrenal glands are activated and they are running from the bear, they're, you know, they're trying to get out of the burning building, they've just been fired from their job, they've just had a car accident, they've just won the lottery, it doesn't matter whether it's positive stress or negative stress. It responds, your body responds the same way. What we know in those situations is the pupils dilate. So I'm going to turn my camera on for a moment because I want to show you something here. When we are talking about pupils dilating, we've got the fibers of the eye and we've got the pupil here. When the pupil dilates, it because, it's because there are muscles in this part of the eye that contract, and as they contract, they pull the pupil open. Now, there's another set of muscles that completely surrounds the perimeter of the pupil itself, and when the light, or when the light is such as in it's bright, or when the stress goes down, the muscles around the pupil contract, make the pupil smaller, and that stretches out the other fibers. Okay, does that make sense? So when we have the pupil dilating, we are going to envision that this part of the iris is like an accordion. If the pupil dilates, it's like someone has compressed, sorry, if the pupil constricts, so we've got, the, we've got the pupil right here. If it constricts, it is going to pull these fibers straighter. And uh, that's the accordion getting stretched out. Now, you know the pleats on the accordion, when you stretch them out, they get flatter. When the pupil dilates or gets bigger, it compresses the accordion. 
So the bellows on the accordion gets more pleated, more zigzaggy, deeper pleats. That's exactly what happens with contraction furrows. When the pupil is very small, the contraction furrows, the fibers are going to get stretched out. It's going to stretch some of the kinking out of the fibers. It's going to make the fibers look a little, or it's going to make the contraction furrows look a little less deep. When we're under stress and the pupil is very big, it's going to compress the iris fibers, and that's going to make the contraction furrows look deeper. So when a person is under stress, the pupils dilate, it compresses the iris tissue, which makes the contraction furrows get deeper for that moment. So let's look at, um, at an eye. Now, for those of you who are on, on Instagram with me, I'm going to move my camera closer, hopefully give you a better view of what we're looking at here. There we go. So we also need to be aware that our technology that we're using changes how these appear. This is so important. This is so very important. The camera in this case was set for a very fast shutter speed to reduce the amount of light. If we don't have as much light going in, the pupil is going to get larger. Now, this is um, a client, and this is what her eyes look like in normal lighting. Even without you know, playing with camera lighting, her pupils were actually this big. She was not on drugs, but she's very high strung and very anxious. Now, the other thing we need to remember is when we have frontal lighting, so for those of you who maybe have cameras or looking at getting one, uh, and I don't mean those inexpensive iriscopes, I mean a good three or $4,000 camera or a slit lamp microscope. When we have the frontal lighting here, it fills in the dips, it fills in the contraction froze. So this looks like she has no contraction froze when in actual fact, when we use really, really bright light, um, and we get her pupil to come down. She's got loads of contraction furrows. So this is um, the same eye, much brighter light, and side lighting. No, I lied. That is, no, that is her eye. That is her eye. Do you see the difference it makes? Bright light, we pull the pupil down. Side light lets us cast shadows. So this is the same eye. It's got the side lighting. Can you see the contraction furrows in there? Can you see all of these wrinkles? I call them ripples in the sand. That's what they look like. So what this shows us is that she functions, the, the large pupil that we looked at says she functions. If that's, let me re-say that. If we are in normal lighting and if everybody else's pupils are in normal size, and her pupils are still as big as we saw in the previous picture. We know that she's functioning in the sympathetic nervous system. When we do the bright light and we see how many layers of contraction froze she's got, she functions in the sympathetic nervous system. Now, in truth, she is a drama queen. She really re reacts to everything in a huge, big way. She has, in spite of the coaching that we're doing, she has a very high carbohydrate diet. She takes very few supplements, if any, and she eats a lot of junk food. That is not a good diet for someone who lives in the sympathetic nervous system. Now, this doesn't tell us she's under stress. This tells us she's predisposed, predisposed to overreacting to stress. Contraction furrows also tell us which parts of the body will feel the stress the most. Now, if we, and I always do this with my clients, I took another picture with the light on the other side, and it highlighted that there were a lot of contraction furrows just all over her eyes. This is a four-year-old. Do you see her contraction furrows? Now, I will tell you that while her mommy was pregnant with her, um, it was very, very stressful. The, the relationship with her daddy was on the rocks. Uh, the couple was living together, and it was not good. 
the pregnancy was incredibly stressful. Um, the mom had had an eating disorder before getting pregnant and did not like the way her body was changing with pregnancy. She didn't want to have breasts. The breasts she thought made her look fat. Her pregnant tummy, she felt, made her look fat. And so this little girl was conceived in a very stressful situation. Her mommy carried her through a very stressful, emotionally stressful pregnancy. And, um, but I'm happy to report that mommy and daddy worked things out, decided to get married, and things are going very, very well for them. They've done lots of, of homework. Just because this little girl lives in a much more calm and loving environment doesn't mean these contraction furrows are going to go away. They won't. She has been primed since she was conceived. And she inherited from her parents, and we're going to see her parents with her right now. There we go. Um, we, we are, she is primed to have, to be living in the sympathetic nervous system. All right, so this is her dad. Notice all of his contraction froze. Even with the frontal lighting, see all the contraction froze. This is her mom. And this is the little girl. So both of these parents have been, uh, have always internalized their stress and dealt with it in ways that were potentially a little on the destructive side. And the daughter now is very prone to the stress as well. So interestingly, both of these parents have become life coaches. They finished their certification in life coaching in an effort to improve their lives and to help other people who have the same kinds of problems they used to have, which I think is very, very fascinating. When we are looking at eyes, again, we are looking at predispositions. And as we look at these predispositions, what we see, there we go, that's a better view for our Instagram friends. What we see is um, not only how do they respond to stress, but what are some of the things that they could uh, be facing physically? When we see contraction furrows, we know that this person likely burns through B vitamins, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium. They likely are perfectionists. They have their to-do lists, and if they don't get everything done on that to-do list, then the day was a failure, right? They tend to be pretty hard on themselves. So this, these are the eyes of a little girl, a two-year-old. Her mommy, uh, she is a third-generation client of mine. I've worked with her grandma, her mommy, and now this little girl. So at the age of two, her mom brought her in and said, um, you know, I just, I want to be preemptive, but what I'm seeing is this little girl is having meltdowns. She never used to have meltdowns. Well, two years old can sometimes do that, right? That's not unusual for a two-year-old to have meltdowns, but this little girl's meltdowns would go on for hours. Like she would get into a screaming fit that would last three, four, five hours. It's like, just, oh my goodness, give the child a sedative, right? And so what we what we did with her was we started pumping up her diet a little bit with some B vitamins. That's all we did. Uh, a little calcium and magnesium as well. Just kept it really, really simple. Notice that the these contraction furrows don't tell us she's deficient in those. These contraction furrows don't tell us she's under stress because she is in an extremely loving home. Mommy and daddy are married. They love each other. They communicate well. Um, this child has, there are boundaries, but the child also has an abundant life, right? And so there's no, no, um, no overt stress except for the stress that a two-year-old perce perceives, like can't find my blanket, can't find my toy. Um, I didn't want to have that for supper, right? Problems that Adults think, well, that's not such a big deal, but could be for a child, right? And so the more her nutrition is depleted, the more she's going to respond to those situations. By making sure she gets those nutrients, she is going to be less volatile. It'll be easier to reason with her as she gets a little bit older. 
Now, the diet in this family is amazing. Mommy cooks from scratch. Most of it's organic. It's so, so healthy. It's like, I want to live with them. Their diet is that good. Um, I've asked them if they would adopt me. They said, no, they love me, but they don't love me enough to adopt me, which made me sad. At any rate, so that is a two-year-old. So contraction furrows don't form as the result of stress. These are inherent. These are passed down from the generations. And that's really important to understand. Here we have the eyes of a young boy. He was 10 years old when he first started coming to see me. He was um, being evaluated for ADD, ADHD. Very distractible. But I'm going to qualify that. He's got all of these contraction throws in his eyes. And what I'm going to say is that every child, every person I've seen who has ADD, ADHD has contraction furrows. Not every person I see who has contraction furrows has ADD or ADHD. Okay, understand how that goes back and forth. So back, back when I first studied Jensenian iridology, we were taught that if you've got three complete rings going around, that means there's a nervous breakdown. Or there's been a nervous breakdown, you're headed for a nervous breakdown. We now know that is not correct. So this little boy came in being assessed for ADD, ADHD. We started with looking at his diet, which was standard North American it was giving him calories. It wasn't necessarily giving him the right kinds of macronutrients when he needed them, nor giving him the micronutrients when he needed them. So we did some revamping, things like protein at breakfast, protein at lunch, protein after school, protein at supper time, made sure he was getting his omegas and his B vitamins and his calcium and his magnesium. Now, he, um, when he came to me, he was very distractible. He's a physical learner. He's a kinesthetic learning. I think that if, if you were to give him a big box of Lego to play with while he was, the teacher was talking about math, I think he would hear every word and he would be brilliant, right? I think if he was given some Play-Doh or some plasticine to play with while the teacher was teaching about language skills, I think he would totally get it. He's got an, a brilliantly creative mind. He's very articulate. He just doesn't learn by sitting still, right? So, but our school system is meant for kids who sit still, right? That makes it easier for the teacher, not necessarily better for the student. So what we did is we did the diet work. We put the supplements in. Then his mom broke her ankle and she was laid up, could not wait there on it for six weeks. She was bored out of her skull. She couldn't go to work. This was way back before working online was a thing like four years ago, right? And I chuckle when I think of that. But she sent me an email and she said, you'll never guess what happened. I was bored. So I asked my son if he would like to play Go Fish or Old Maid or some little card game. And he said, yes. So he came and he sat on my bed. And normally he would get partway through a game before he would say, okay, mom, I'm done. And he would wander off or he would just wander off. She said, we got through one whole game. I'm going, holy Hannah. And he said, mom, can we play again? They got through a second game and she's going, my stars, where's my son? And what have you done with him? And then he asked to play a third game. And it wasn't until partway through the third game that he decided he was finished. So just by recognizing what his eyes told us about his inherent potential, that he burns through those nutrients, that he is likely going to have a hard time filtering stimuli because those nutrients are low. And by padding up all of the macros and the micros that he needed, we were able to extend his attention ability by what, two or three hundred percent? That is remarkable. He doesn't really need drugs. What he needs is a better diet. Here we have the eyes of a 12-year-old, very healthy, very active, very smart. This young boy, and we're going to see his brother on the next slide, this young, young man and his brother both typically take the top academic awards in the sciences and sometimes in the humanities. They almost always take the top athletic 
awards and they take the they earn the top uh, uh, athletic and academic combined so the athlete that has the highest grades these are kids that get really ticked if their grades are under about 94 percent right and they work hard now why do I bring this up? He's athletic. He's involved in every school sport he can be. He plays highly competitive soccer. His parents are together. They do things like they coach the soccer teams, right? They want to be super involved with their boys' lives. Um, the parents are both also self-employed in their own, they each have their own businesses. But this mom is very, very conscientious about diet, about the boys getting enough rest, about them having some time where they just goof off and totally be kids. And so we've got that really balanced lifestyle. They eat amazingly. Uh, the mom and the next son we're going to look at have chosen to be vegan. And so sometimes the family has a vegan meal. Sometimes there's vegan for the two vegans in the family and there's a piece of uh, animal protein for everybody else kind of thing. But the mother watches the, the diet here, makes sure the kids has physical stimulation, mental stimulation, and it's working so well for them. This is his younger brother, who is two years younger. Notice the contraction furrows. They got these from both of their parents. Again, these, this boy, very, very smart, very well read. These kids are now 15 and 17 and actually there are grandchildren so of course they're quite perfect in every way um, but we just recently spent an evening with just the boys and with all the things that are going on politically here in Canada and in Alberta it was really interesting to talk with these two teenagers about politics and to understand and to hear how well read they are and they weren't just regurgitating their parents points of view they were actually talking about different candidates and what their platforms are and what they liked about the platforms and what they don't like about the platforms. So these boys are smart. This is the son who was a vegan with his mom. Contractions for us, again, very competitive in sports and in academics. But mom has made sure that their nutrition, that their food is excellent. Now, that doesn't mean they don't get junk food once in a while because they do. They have junk days where it's just pure garbage. But you know what? It's what she's doing 90% of the time that counts. And that is really covering their tracks. Vegetables and proteins, right? So, so important. Here we have another woman. And you can see, again, frontal lighting makes the contraction for us a little harder to see, but you can see them in here when we look for them. She's had a lot of stress in her life, a lot of stress. Um, she and her former husband uh, were large-scale farmers, and she had been diagnosed with MS, only it was an on-again, off-again diagnosis. You know, There'd be someone saying, oh, yeah, you know, you've got one doctor would say, yeah, you've got MS. And the next one would say, no, you really don't. And the next one would say, oh, yeah, you really do. And back and forth and back and forth. So um, she's had a lot of stress. You know, farming is hard. Farming is hard. I think farming is one of the bravest industries you can be involved in because you have no control over the weather. And I mean, we just had a hail yesterday or two days ago with hail the size of, if you don't know what a loony is, it's. A little bit smaller than a ping pong ball. And I know people that are in farming areas that got totally wiped out. You know, 20 minutes and the entire year has wiped them out, right? So, so high stress. And then uh, she was away for a couple of days a few years ago. And when she came home, she found her husband had left her. A note on the table, the boys had helped him moved out. And uh, he was gone. I was like, oh, my goodness. So she's had a ton of stress. None of that stress put these contraction furrows in her eyes. This is what she inherited. Her job now, as far as her wellness is concerned, is to make sure she keeps her blood sugars balanced, 
to make sure because in the, when the blood sugars are unbalanced, the nervous system does not work very well to make sure she's getting her B vitamins, vitamin C, calcium, and magnesium to make sure she's doing whatever she needs to do to um, relieve her stress, whether it's going for walks or going for a massage or going swimming or journaling or whatever. Um, she needs to be taking care of herself, right? So, so important. Here's a 24-year-old male. He's a Filipino uh, fellow. High anxiety, lots of depression. Look at these contraction furrows. Right, again, bright light, so pupils are small. If the lights aren't so bright, his pupils are quite a bit bigger. Really a poor diet, as in, oh my goodness, a bad diet. Super high carb, super junky. Actually, he's, he's just made some radical changes, which we're very excited about. Um, up until about a month ago, I would have described him as lazy. No physical activity whatsoever, no desire to do anything. About 40 or 50 pounds overweight. He's about 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, he's not very tall. And he's, he's obese. He's truly obese. I, I put him on the bio tracker many years ago when he was about 20, 20 years of age. And it said that his metabolic age was 90. And that's the oldest the bio tracker will read. It won't give you anything, anything older. So that wasn't good. So again, this doesn't say he's under stress, but it certainly says he has increased nutrient demands in certain directions, right? So um, and he's not open to the idea of new, uh, supplementation, but he's got a friend who is about his age, who is even more obese. And this friend um, had decided, like a friend probably has 150 pounds to lose. The friend decided he was going to get a grip on this. He cleaned up his eating. He started working out daily and lost 100 pounds in about three months just from making improvements, which is just amazing, right? That spurred this fellow, whose eyes we're looking at, on, and he instantly cleaned up. Now, I don't know that he's lost any weight, but for the past about six weeks now, he has not consumed soda pop, which used to be two liters a day, two quarts for those of you in the States. He is not eating junk food. He's asking for vegetables at meal times, and he is working out every day. So the results will start to come. And what will we see from that? Not only will we see his blood sugars improve and his cholesterol improve, but we'll see the depression and the anxiety improve because he's eating better and getting exercise. It's going to help him handle stress better. Now, if only we could get him to do a little bit more with maybe some B vitamins, that would be just a real a real uh the icing on the cake which is not the right analogy to use for someone who eats junk food is it so the eyes don't tell us the contraction froze don't tell us the person is under stress they do tell us that this person is prone to overreacting and prone to burning through the nutrients that help them to keep their stress reactions in check they also tell us how to support this person right, what nutrients they need, and so on. All righty, so just a quick little intro here. The dynamic iridology uh, assessment system for holistic health practitioners is the only on live online fully mentored course for nutritionists, herbalists, and naturopaths who want to streamline their clinical work without sacrificing client care. I created this course for iridology for holistic practitioners specifically because I saw too many holistic practitioners seeing a client for the first time, then going off and spending anywhere from two to six hours of their own time creating protocols to bring them back to the client in the second appointment, only to have the client never come back again. That's not a viable business model. And so we've created a way where you can use iridology and tailor your programs more succinctly so that the clients need and want to come back while they continue to make progress over time. This, the, this way of doing iridology will increase client compliance and long-term uh, retention, which is really what we need in business. 
If you're interested in more information on this course, and I hope you are, then here is the link. We will be starting in about 20 minutes to do an info session webinar about the course. And in this course, you will learn what kinds of problems using iridology in your, in your practice can help you solve in your practice, not client problems, but, but the, the logistical problems that we sometimes have in our practices. We'll talk about what's included in the course, what the tuitions are, what kind of support you get. We'll talk about all kinds of things. I'm going to give you three or four tips that are not that don't depend on iridology for ways to make your holistic health practice more financially successful without even charging your clients more money. All right, so if you're interested in that, grab that URL tinyurl.com slash 2021-September-2. On Facebook, Leah says, thank you for refreshing my knowledge, knowledge about contraction first. You're welcome, Leah. It's always good to see you. And uh, yeah, we actually talk about you in the next webinar, Leah. You're a star. And so anyone who wants to, to join us at the new URL in about 20 minutes, we will be there right, ready to rock and roll. That webinar will be about an hour and a half to an hour and three quarters. It's a longer one because there's a lot of stuff. We'll actually look at some eyes and do some case studies as well. So you can see how to apply this in practice. I look forward to seeing you hopefully in 20 minutes. Take care and have a good rest of your day if I don't see you soon. Bye for now.